Welcome everyone to uh, the second evening of uh, our uh, series of events, programs related to the Body Collective Performance Art Histories. My name is John Tain, head of research here at Asia Art Archive, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to uh, a lecture presentation, I think that's what we're calling it, uh, by Maya Krishna Rao. Maya Krishna Rao lends a new dimension to contemporary Indian theater, both on and off stage. Since then, she has established herself as one of the premier figures in India, devising performances that range from dance theater to stand-up comedy, to collaborations with sound designers and filmmakers to cre create performances, uh, to engaging with school children and teachers in the use of drama as a teaching device in the classroom. Till recently, Maya was professor in the Department of Arts, Design, and Theater at the Shiv Nader University, where she designed an applied theater diploma program, uh, Theater for Education and Social Transformation, TEST, uh, a first in any institution of higher education. Social concerns have been consistently a formative uh, part of her practice. Uh, following her college career, she joined the Autonomous Women's Movement in the late 70s and early 80s, working collectively through street theater and other guerrilla forms of performative practices to promote gender equality. Maya's shows have traveled the world, and she has been commissioned to create performances for prestigious theater festivals at home and abroad. Some of her celebrated shows are Koldo, uh, Deep Fried Jam, Heads Are Meant for Walking Into, the non-stop feel-good show, I love these titles, uh, Rava Nama, and the recent walk that, has created, that was created in response to the horrific gang rape in a moving bus and eventual tragic death of Jyoti Singh. Recently, Asia Art Archive had the tremendous fortune to work with Maya at the Serendipity Arts Festival, where she contributed a live art piece, Loose Woman, uh, about which she will in part be speaking, I think, tonight. Before ceding the mic to Maya, I would like to just say a few words of appreciation. Asia Art Archive's activities, including its series of performance-related programs during Art Basel Hong Kong, would not be possible without the support of a whole community. Uh, this community includes Shane Aykroyd, Susan Benningson, and Steve Ahrens, Mimi Brown, and Alp Ursel, who are here in the audience tonight. Thank you. Uh, Patricia and Jonathan Crockett, Catherine Don and Daniel Tuff, Catherine and Barry Freeman, Uni and Ron Lee, uh, Wendy Lee and Stephen Lee, James Lee, Tiffany Soong and Jake Lynch, Arts Council Korea, uh, CL3 Architect LTD, and the Regis Saint, uh, Saint Regis Hong Kong. And uh, without further ado, I think I will cede the stage to Maya. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me here. Uh, this is a big task for me. I don't usually talk. I know I have an hour to perform in, and that is easier. This business of having to put words and speak about your work is very difficult, and so I've requested that I be given a Give, be given warnings. So let me race along, and if you find that I am too, going too fast, do raise your hand. And I hope there are lots of questions because I'd like to keep time for that and not blabber on myself too much. Um, now, I'd like to take you through my last performance, the way it got made, the way it's changing, and uh, right up till two days before I left India, I had to do it in a in yet another new scenario, and um, I'd like to take you through that journey. But before I do, I'd like to just mark a few things about myself, where I come from as a performer, so that you have some things to, s to know where this Maya comes from and how she's taken off into this show called Lose Woman. Um, my, my beginnings, my only training, I'm a theater performer, but my only training, I didn't go to drama school, is in Kathakali. And Kathakali, for those who may not know about it, is a dance theater form. So we, we dance with our feet, but we talk with our hands. So, and the talking is not as fast as this. So, the speed with which I say the word mountain, now in Kathakali, it would depend on what character I'm playing 
and therefore what I invest in the word in terms of intention, time, and space. So for instance, in Kathagali, if I were to say the word mountain, and if I am a character, somebody as large, and I've only ever um, specialized in the male role in Kathagali, which was a, a blessing for me, um, so mountain for somebody like Ravana, who's a huge uh, mythological character, and who finds himself even larger than the mountain. What's a mountain? Nothing. So for him, he takes a 10-beat cycle, not fast, but slow. Now the word, the gesture for mountain is only that. That's the gesture. But when he does it, he will take all the time. Yeah. That's not allowed. What? <laughs> and it can go on because it's Ravana, he will create its height and its depth. And then he'll say, get out of my way. <laughs> you won't get out of my way? Oh, well, then he'll lift it. And then he'll chuck it in the air. And he'll hold it in one hand. And he'll hold it in one finger. And he'll watch it twirl in the air. And he'll say, come. Uh, and then it sits again on this other palm. So uh, I'm only saying this because uh, when you do this kind of art form at the age of seven, when you have little knowledge of the world, and yet you have such grandeur being built into such a tiny body, uh, it's, it's, uh, I'm only beginning to realize now what, it's, what it has done for me. Such largeness sitting in a small body, such, uh, such grandeur of imagination that the body can produce all this, that you talk with your hands and you dance with your feet. So you can instill, a, and you're trained every single part of the body, the eyebrows, the eyes, the cheeks, the lips. There's long training uh, in all of this. And that you can come to a moment, and then you get older and you can't see a damn thing. <laughs> but you can train then this body to invest any bit of imagination anywhere. You can choose where you want to stick your imagination. So I just wanted to say this to you, that my beginnings are here at one end, and then somewhere along the line, when I was in my late 20s, uh, so this is Kathagali, this is in full gear. You can't tell who the actor is, this is me. And we say in Kathagali that the actor must be so transformed that it's only a ring on the finger or the type of, from the toenail, that you realize who the performer is. Otherwise, there mustn't be anything uh, that gives away the identity of the performer. Uh, and at the other end, that's me on uh, extreme left, is, um, was street theater. Uh, so this is late 70s. We would uh, pick up issues. And why I say this is street theater is also about the large gesture. But now the change is that there's no more falling back on the code of Kathagali. You are creating your own meaning, your own intention. The grandeur, the scale is still large. Your time is 30 minutes because there's all the people sitting there, they are, they've come there for their lunch break. You only have them for that little time. And you must say what you need to say. And so it has to be very precise. Now, very early on, I realized that for me, making the grand gesture and, and uh, giving a slogan didn't go with me. I didn't want to make the big slogan. I wanted to make a big action, but to be able to, to point to something, I wouldn't say small, but maybe personal, not private, but something that lies in opposition to, okay, let's go fight. No. 
It's about, so can I just sit here and have my cup of tea, will you? Can I? Yeah? Is it okay? All right. So how do you go from making a large gesture and yet uh, point to a moment, a tiny moment in someone's life? What is that space all about? It always interested me, but I didn't know quite how to do it. And I spent a lot of my... And Lou's woman for me is a revelation because she then taught me how to go from the large to the small. So that was street theater. And then I, uh, I, ch I chanced upon comedy. And a Kathakali, where we don't speak a word, suddenly for me, this floodgates of words had to open up because comedy for me became very much about the here and now and it was largely political comedy, uh, making f ma uh, picking up current event in India, and um, what should I say? The word isn't sending it up, but to look to look at the underbelly of things, not very pleasant, very unpleasant. Everybody's laughing. I'm not laughing. I'm the performer, and yet you're laughing with a sense of, oh my God. So comedy for me is still continues to be uh, very challenging. This is uh, again comedy based on uh, a big um, minister in, uh, in, in India. For us, politics right now in India is real, fertile, wonderful material. It's highly tragic what's happening in India. And that's why it becomes very, very inviting to make high comedy. How do you do it? Um, and then, uh, some of me, uh, for a very long time, has been drawn to object. These are tea glasses when I was growing up uh, in India, when we only took trains. Sometimes, uh, your train from Delhi to Kerala, where my mother belongs, takes three, three, uh, three nights and two days you spend on the train. And you cross some five states of India, and everywhere, this is the kind of glass you got tea from. While language, costume, culture, everything changed, the glass wouldn't. And so it was something that I held on to, I don't know, subconscious, conscious, somewhere. And so when I started making solo, I would rummage around for what lies in there and look for those kinds of objects to, to inspire me while I stood alone in a room. So, Object. This is a cycle rickshaw that I picked up in Cape Town, and what was told to me was these women, they pluck wires, uh, they steal uh, telephone wires in the night, they quickly wrap them with cane overnight, and <coughs> these wonderful objects are made by morning, and they're sitting there and very innocently selling them, and who knows where the wire came from. <laughs> So when objects are invested with so much history, they become an attraction for me. I may not tell the story of the object, but when you're playing solo, it's like they become your co-actor. Um, these people, dolls are found in every part of India with their own costuming, their own... Uh, they speak without speaking, uh, a whole culture. So they also, and these particular toys come from the south of India, and each one carries the badge of their profession. So they are women with, um, uh, what do you call them, tasla? To carry sand and cement, or there's a tailor, or there's uh, somebody with a bag, which means a slightly richer officer. Uh, so these dolls were very attractive to me. Now, finally, I want to say, I started working with a live camera. And I am, that's why these talks are good. When you're making shows, and for me, the making comes from, I only improvise. I put up a camera, I get into an empty room. If I can get somebody who makes music, that's a bonus. But the early days started with cassette recorder. So you play music, you shut your eyes, you've done some yoga, and you just try and move into a zone. I like to start with an empty mind and see what may enter it. Or sometimes I've started with a story or an event in the newspapers. And I realize now 
that when the camera came into the room, it became another co-actor, like the object. If I took the camera close to some part of my body and I could, I didn't want to look at the image, I wanted to sense it. But of course I'd peek and feel its vibration. And of course the camera does what the naked eye can't see. And for me, the first time that I saw some of just that bit of skin blown up, it's like it's, it's me and it's not me. It's like we live with our liver and our heart and our blood, but who has ever seen them? I have forever for 45 years talked to my liver because it has misbehaved and misbehaved and three times hepatitis. And you curse it and you love it and you say shut up and you do all that, but you will never ever get to see it. And this is something I would take into acting class. Why do we get so intimate with things that we will never ever know? So is that what God means to some people? That because you'll never know God, you can do what you like with the idea of it. Uh, so I think somewhere for me, this idea of camera and body, the, the gesture of Kathakali, it felt like uh, a further extension, that these hands and these feet got further extended, making fresh gesture through this live camera. That's what I felt. And so I'm just showing you this. This was a show, by the way, I was commissioned by uh, United Nations, somebody of the, uh, to make a show on masculinities. And I said, why poor old me? Why don't you get hold of a man? Uh, and they said, no, no, you better do it. And so for me, it was a great learning. I made the show with two men, a, a sound designer and a video artist. And uh, that was, so theater is all about, when you stand alone in the room, there's no better education. And I realized the kind of masculinities that sat inside me that I needed to talk and contend with. But the realization only came from, um, getting intimate with parts of the body as an extension of yourself. It was like you were talking to yourself and yet it wasn't yourself, a bit like the liver. Um, now, I would do exercises like this in my rehearsal room and at one point I kept the idea of Lady Macbeth. I, wa I was very, like many theatre people, we were drawn to the char some characters uh, and Lady Macbeth had always attracted me. Who is she? What, what is she? What can she be about? And when I did this exercise with the camera, a whole text came to me. And I realized that she is probably the fourth witch. Because I don't have a, I, uh, I don't have a slide here. One day in my rehearsal room, I lay down and I stuck my legs up in the air and my friend only shot my legs uh, only my legs were in the camera, and when I saw my legs moving around, it felt like Lady Macbeth was running around in the forest, <coughs> that she had left behind a, a space that she knew so intimately and found herself for no, for no fault or reason of her own in, in, in um, unfamiliar, what do you call it, royal, uh, environs of the nobility, which is what then drives her like many of us, when we find ourselves in unfamiliar circumstances, we do actions that are not familiar to us. So she goes for killing and handing over the knife to her husband because she herself is living in unfamiliar. But I'm trying to say that it was the camera that, the camera in the room that brought this fresh line of imagination uh, for me. Okay, so so much for where I come from. Uh, now, just a few words about Lou's Woman. Lou's Woman was made in September 2018. And I had thought that I was going to revive an old show that was made 18 years ago called A Deeper Fried Jam, which was heavily music driven, live, uh, um, a guitarist on stage. And in 20, the summer of 2018, I told myself, 
having resigned a professorial job in the university, which didn't suit me at all. And I decided I better go back to doing what, I'm, what I am, which is a performer. And I thought I was reviving Deep Fried Jam, but what happened was new stuff started getting improvised. And because the last thing I had ever performed was this piece called Walk, which is there on YouTube, which was a, sh which, uh, I don't call it a show, it's a performance that was made, as John said, very quickly, it was made in about 45 minutes in response to the, the horrible rape of Jyoti on a moving bus on December 16, 2012. She died then on December 29. On December 30, I get a call saying, please come tomorrow with something around Jyoti. And I say, but I don't have anything. And I can't overnight make something. And those were days we were all carrying a stone in our bellies and walking around. So <laughs> not very conducive for, we say this space has to be opened up, has to be excited, your gut. For me, my gut had locked itself up. But it must have been something to do with Jyoti. It must have been very largely to do with the young people who were every day walking the streets of Delhi that a performance came. And I quickly, I was partly doing and partly keying in words, and the walk happened. I've lost my thread for a second. I don't know why I was talking about walk to get to lose woman. But yeah, I think this idea of having done the walk, and the walk is all about um, um, Walk. One, two, one, one. One step at a time, can I, will I, should I? At nine, ten, there's music to it also. Eleven, at twelve, midnight, I want to walk the streets of my city. I want to sit on a bus. I want to lie in the park. I want to cross the road. And I'll try not to be afraid of the dark. And it goes on like this. And I think somewhere this constantly performing this piece, which is only 20 minutes long, took me into the idea of moving, because the whole piece is not about rape. It's not about anything to do with that. It's only about moving. That if I don't move into my city at whatever time, can I sit at a bus at 2 a.m.? Because sitting in, at a bus stop at 2 a.m., I may discover a new side of who Maya is. Can I go and sit? Uh, can I? Yeah, I have run out of my home as a 16-year-old and lay on the, on, on the grass in the park. And of course, uh, at 16, you're wonderfully sentimental. And the, and the dew on my back and the moon above. And I know, I carry that, we all do. We've done things in a particular space where you find an extension of yourself in that moment. And I know for a lot of women, and even men today, that has been cut off this discovering bits of yourself through being in bits of your city at different times of day and night, which is what the walk was about. I think somewhere it drew me when I started improvising, looking at Deep Fried Jam, but thinking I must revive that show. It was already taking me into the territory of Loose Woman. So it so happened that one day when I was improvising and I told myself, that walk never looked at those rapists, which I think as a performer is my job. If I am going to take something that is in response to Jyoti, I better also be looking at what their world was, the world of the rapists. And so there I was in my room holding the steering wheel of a bus, and I was moving along, and in my, to my lips came the word, lose woman. 
And when the improvisation got over, I told my musician friend, shall we, let's make a show, forget about all this, let's make a show called Loose Woman. And after that, I, we just started improvising. And so there were improvisations around a washerwoman, around a woman who makes garlands, flower garlands in Delhi, around um, my own mother, who's 96 today, has no memory, who will go on planting and replanting plants and come the next morning and again replant them. She's a loose woman of her own kind. And this loose woman I found, she has all the facility to go anywhere and everywhere that the woman in walk could not. This I only realize in hindsight. So much so that loose woman even has an episode around Gandhi. She finds herself standing next to him. And some of you may know of this uh, wonderful episode in our political history where Gandhi went to the, to, to the seashore and picked up salt and said, we won't buy British salt anymore. We'll make our own salt, thank you. And that salt then became a symbol of um, independence. So somewhere along the line in improvising, I found uh, that salt, found Gandhi, and somehow Gandhi also became a loose woman. So loose woman is not only about woman, it's about a state of mind, it's about a state of being, and anybody can be a loose woman. And I realized actually that for me as a performer, it's also telling me you haven't, you haven't hit the tip of the iceberg, Maya, in terms of dealing with form, of content, of how to pull things out of yourself and do they go into performance? How do you look at the world around you and pull from it in so many different ways? You only touch the iceberg. So you were a look from the body of a loose woman to realize uh, more and more in your form, which for me is still theater. Okay, so I'm going to show you some clips now. Are we doing okay for time? Um, I have no director. I am my own director. So I have no idea how, what it's going to look like. Okay, now the first um, rendering, the first uh, version of Loose Woman was in a black box theater and it was done in a way that was comfortable for me as a theater performer and the audience, uh, me playing in the center and the audience on both sides. And then I get an invitation from, uh, yeah, you're the culprit, uh, from the visual arts section of a festival in India called serendipity, saying, we're not inviting you to the theater section. Will you come into the visual arts? Now, visual arts is still something distant for me, but I'm beginning to take small baby steps into it, and it's very inviting. Um, so I told myself, I told them, I, I, I will play around with Loose Woman and make a visual arts version, God alone knows what that means, uh, to go to serendipity. So here we were, and John is a witness to the fact, I kept telling myself, um, you, uh, your show can never be set. If you want to live up to the loose woman, you better always set up surprises for yourself. Otherwise, you're not loose enough. <laughs> so day one, the show had one kind of very boring uh, kind of black tights like you wear for a warm-up. And I went through the whole show, and it was okay. And then my sound designer friend said, Maya, there's no, we say in Hindi, no dumb. There's no, there's no action. There's no energy. What, what happened to your costume? <laughs> and so uh, somebody happened to be coming from Delhi. They came, they brought the costume. So on day two, you're in your costume. 
And then, then you have these little chats with your video designer and your sound designer, and you change other things as well, because Lou's woman is saying you have to change. So one thing that changed was, we didn't do the whole thing uh, inside uh, the hall given to us. The, it's an old, lovely building in Goa, uh, with a very colonial style, um, what was it, a balcony. Uh, and so the second show, first show was done inside the hall, second show, we're already out, uh, um, out in the corridor and then brought the show in. I'm going to show you a tiny clip and um, what you see here is like 99% of what I improvise, the same text, not the action changes, but the text is the same. And um, I know it's very noisy here. The whole thing, theme is, and which is very alien for me, I had never touched on things personal for a woman in any of my shows. Probably because my beginnings were in street theater, it was always the large social issues. And for us, in our generation, touching on the personal felt like, oh God, that's navel gazing. That's, uh, you're being too, what's the word? Uh, Self-occupied. And I told myself in Loose Woman, no, you want to be really loose, you'll have to do the whole spectrum of going from the personal, the private, all the way to the political and uh, I don't know what lies beyond. I don't deal with cosmology yet, but uh, yeah, so, uh, political for now. And so this improvisation, which was very new for me, and that's why I think the words that came out were, I'm going to do a bit because I am a performer and then I'll show you a bit on the banister. So how it went was in the improvisation, you think, you th and there's music which we don't have now, you think she wakes up in the morning like everybody else, 5, 5.30, 6, oh, 7.30 at the very latest. You think she takes those four and a half steps and she, ah, checks the puffiness under her eyes. Nothing that a splash of water won't look after. And then she chop, 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 roll, 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 tiffin one, tiffin two, tiffin three. Now, tiffin is a very Indian thing. You make the little snack box for all the children and the husband. And so <laughs> tiffin one, tiffin two, tiffin three. And then, then she's on her own and, hmm, what shall I wear? And then she gets into her. These are the moments when she's tucking in her pleats. Um, better get a resolve, woman. Show that man his place in office today. Who the hell does he think he is? These are all the kinds of thoughts that happen when we, you know, this business of your body and dressing. And of course, we know, you've seen the sari, yeah? Sari. Now, whether it'll be a little bit under the bosom, I know how much cleavage, or a little over, or how tantalizing, all this is of great concern. So, all this, and of course in India, this, all the messages that you tuck inside there, woman, and never bother to check. So these sort of moments for me to make them in my room were very new for me. And I had to push myself into discovering what is, and I know I haven't gone far yet at all. So here she is in a public place like the banister, like this, uh, what do you call it? Um, landing. landing. Thank you. Okay. So, what do you think? I need to make this. Uh, how do I think this somebody help? Uh, <laughs> ah. No, but yes, yes, that's right. Yes. That's the one. We want to full screen and... Uh, so these are the kind of minute decisions you make. There's already an artist there coming to the end of his performance. And I asked him beforehand, would you mind if Lou's woman intervened? And he said, yeah, that's fine. 
And so Lou's woman is getting ready in the room next door, and she chances upon him. And for me, it's also about how to surprise myself. We as theater performers don't do this sort of thing because it's, it's usually all rehearsed. But now it's about Lou's woman saying, uh, uh, thank you very much. Can I know what's, what's lying under here? Yes, uh, yeah. So that's, that's what she's about. Uh, so this is how this show began. of Hindi cinema. find herself there from a previous performance. So that's her floating down the wall uh, from a recording of a previous performance. And you can't hear it now, but that's the sound coming out of that. Uh, it's the beginning of the show. I learned to step out of my skin, my heart. So she's watching herself. So that's the kind of extent of her own looseness. Okay. Now, quickly, two more clips. Um, just to give you an idea of, again, the, this is all about looseness. Right now in India, um, you must know from television, I'm sure, uh, 
very tough times we're going through. And I've told myself that I will perform out on the streets. And what gets done there must then find its way back into the rehearsal room. So that's the kind of stretchability I want to keep for myself. So very quickly, uh, you would know of this um, phenomenon in India where the Muslim community that eats beef buys and sells cows. And when the cow then doesn't give milk anymore, then the cow is put to sleep. It's skinned, the skin goes to be making shoes, and the beef then is sold for people to eat. But we have a regimen now that has slammed all of this, and so men are killed because they were supposedly eating beef, and cow is meant to be holy cow that's not meant to be killed. So uh, there's, a, there's a big movement happening in India, and uh, I was asked to, again, you're given very little time, and for me, a very difficult moment, because uh, the family of a man who was killed like this, the family had stood there, all the men, and with tears rolling down, had talked about their son or their brother who had been knifed. And I'm supposed to come on stage soon after them and perform. Now, this is the classic, th this is the classic uh, dilemma for the performer. This, how you come face to face with reality, what you do with it. But I had never, ever faced it like this. They have come and told their story, they've gone off stage, they are weeping, everybody in the audience is weeping, and after that, you're supposed to come on stage, and of course, art is... It's not life. It is still representational. What do you do when those line of men are stand, sitting there in front of you? They haven't gone away. And so I made a performance. I'm going to show you just two minutes of it, because then that performance went into the rehearsal room and became part of Lou's Woman. उसने आरिफ ने अपनी बोलेरो को यूं लेकर और यूं बैक करके और जैसे रोजाना का गाड़ी खड़ी होती उस तरह से खड़ा किया सामने से पुलिस की गाड़ी आई उसमें से चार पुलिस वाले उतरे और एक ड्राइवर साइड हो गया एक कंडक्टर साइड दो आगे खड़े हो गए और जो कंडक्टर साइड था कैलाश उसने एक फोर्टी सेवन से उसपे जो ग Where do I go? Here, 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 here. Up, I'll just show you a few seconds. Now, when you, this is out on the street in the busiest uh, central part of Delhi. And Delhi now, for many months, there was only one particular place where you could hold protest action. 
So this is there on the, on the choraha, on the crossroads. Uh, now, part of me wants to perform there because I know as a person for Maya, it'll be a completely new experience. And of course, performing with that family in front and that feeling you want to hold with you and then go back into the rehearsal room and see how it will drive a new kind of energy from you, a new inspiration, a new imagination, which will then, that show will go into all sorts of other places like this, or into a black box, or into a proscenium theater. So this looseness of going from the street to a room to a, I want to experience this more, which is why in, in India today, any, any invitation I get, to make a show, hello, to make a show within a few hours, I do it for loose woman. It's really for loose woman. It's not for me. It's like loose woman has become this thing uh, that I need to le get from and I need to invest in. And so here's just a few seconds of uh, how then the camera came in. I got to say this. Now, in the show, there's a role for a sari, a white sari. My mother, after a point, went off and was with a brahmachari. With a, she got into a kind of movement where they only wear white saris. So I, the sari then is spread and clipped on like on a clothesline. And my friend then, uh, these names, Pehlu Khan is, is, is a name of a man who was very brutally killed. A 15-year-old boy traveling in a train was brutally killed. And all those then names become very important. But it's the energy of this then that led to, and I'll end with that. I learned to listen. So that's your clipped-on sari. It's a very personal thing. It's a, it's a woman's garment. And yet on it is being... Uh, she's drawing lines, which have come from the world. And they're drawing lines on her, on what she clothes herself in. So this is what the camera then makes possible for me, and then it generates another imagination. The lines are taken from that street show. So if you, but it, if you try and draw a line of inside of me, I'll take it out, I'll lay it right there, and I'll ask you, hey, what do we do with it? Do we dance along? Do we skip along? Do we laugh? And then it comes to... This was a very big moment on the streets when I did it on. But here it's very small and there's music and she's saying, or do we just rub 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 I'll say it in English now. You need to buy a cow. I'll come with you to the market. Uh, let's go. What's again? What's again? What's again? What's again? And when she's given you all that she could, and it's time to put her to sleep, shoes will get made. Mouths will be fed. You'll buy another one. Oh, so, 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 so. You need to buy a cow. I'll go with you to the Monday. And then from the under the sun, till you throw a bloody shirt my way. I'll stand him up. Junaid. 
and it goes on like that. But here the lines were, were what to say, it was just a different kind of uh, performance. So this, I'll just for a minute, if you just watch it quietly without me talking, you get a feel of how different action is on the street from Okay, I think I'll hold it there. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll... Uh, Thank you. Questions. I'm very happy for yeah. questions. Thank you, Maya. Yeah. Um, so at this point, we're open for questions. So if anyone has any questions. Yep. I'd like to know um, your feeling about um, doing the performance at the, at the state on stage or just with the night. What's the difference? Sorry, I, didn't I mean your performance with the night or just dancing or singing on the stage, what's the difference? What do you prefer? You mean dancing out in the night? Yes. Did you say night? Yes. Um, I think I... Uh, 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 the night plays a very special place. In fact, Loose Woman ends with the night. She picks up mud of the street, which shines under the moon and turns to salt. And she rubs it on her body, and the salt keeps her skin warm, because that's what salt does. But I wouldn't have had any of this, this imagination if I hadn't had the sense of the night. There's, there's nothing like the night, I think, that, then, that can give you a sense of opposites, that you there's only you and the night. And as large as the night is, you too can become larger than the night, which in the day, one can't. So I don't know how to answer that question. I do go out uh, to, to sense the night, because then it fills and stretches me and opens doors in a way that the day doesn't. And that's why I think the night, uh, and the night, of course, is very important to women in India, uh, particularly after the walk. I mean, uh, particularly after the gang rape. Uh, the whole question of what is the night? Is it only about security? Is it only about women need to feel safe and so give us policemen? No, we don't want police. We look after ourselves, thank you very much. I just want to be able to walk. So for me, the night is also about walking. It's about time and it's about space. One doesn't walk in the day, or at least my memories of very fulfilling walks are when all the shops have shut down, and in Delhi, of course, you'll see people sleeping on the streets. And then when you put one foot ahead of the other, it's an altogether different experience than walking in the day with another kind of awareness of what you have to do next, which in the night you don't, usually. There's nothing to be done next. If that answers you, I don't know. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you for such a generous talk. Um, there was a book published in 2016 called Mapping South Asia, which is a theatre history book. And in the Indian section, um, the author describes the new Indian theatre as a marginal theatre. It's no longer nationalist. And she describes three forms of the new marginal theatre. The first is the Indian English theatre of Mahesh Datani. The second is the Dalit theatre. We don't know who that really rep is represented by. And the third is the feminist theatre. And you and Anuradha Kapoor are the representatives of that theatre. Um, what would you, your response be to being a representative of the new Indian theatre? The marginal or the new Indian theatre? The marginal is the new Indian theatre. No, I don't go for all this. We are, all of us, we are all in that big melting pot and we're all there and there's space for all. And this idea of the marginal becomes very useful. I, I can't remember who the writer is and I'm not casting aspersions on people, but this marginal becoming a lens for being able to look and say and see what you want to is played out too much. Uh, I think... Uh, uh, I don't know whether Anuradha and I, we have done a lot of theatre, I don't speak for her, but we aren't on the margins. We are definitely centre, centre stage uh, in all the light along with everybody else. Um, I was really curious to um, hear you mention the kind of moment when the personal kind of became part of your practice. And I'm just curious about how that was for you internally. Um, I don't know if you can just talk a little bit about that. Cause I think that's such an interesting, cause it's such, it seems like for so long and then a shift. So I'm just curious. Yeah, as I said, I don't think, I think I'm only uh, really hit the tip of the iceberg because every moment that I collide with that seems to be personal stroke private, it already feels stereotypical. It feels like a stereotype already. If I say she rolls out her bread and she chops her vegetables, we already have a million images from advertising, from movies, from, and so much intention and meaning has been given to these acts that now for me, the next thing is how to counterpose things like rolling and chopping and where to put the sari. It has to be counterpointed with something else so that you feel the tension of I'm, I'm uh, okay, so shall we talk business? Um, I don't know how much is happening in the market now, but give me an idea of the figures. What, what, what did you, what, what, yeah? You know, so that for the, uh, that it's a tension for me that we are two different zones. Uh, need to be colliding in order for the personal to take on that kind of expression that is invisible. Right now, what I'm saying is far too visible. We can see the woman arranging her sari. It's the visible. But you, I'm more interested in the invisible, the intangible, and how that comes and collides with the, with the visible. And that can, I think, only begin to happen if I take different themes where the personal, the social, uh, you know, I, I do an acting exercise sometimes with students, so which is about the veil. Uh, this is a dupatta that many women would not go out without. Yeah, so then it's worn like that. And what happens when this is curled up and put under the pillow? And you go play with it for just only 30 seconds. And that'll, for a student, a young student, dupatta under the pillow, will generate a different kind of energy. Okay, now that dupatta is lying there on the threshold of your house, between the outside and the inside, and it's just there, now go play. Only 30 seconds, it'll generate something else. It's a very personal uh, piece of clothing. And then you take that and you say, okay, it's on the curbstones of the street, not yet on the street, it's on those stones. And we're not looking for logic. We're not looking for who left it there. It's about an actor, performer. Go play with it. Go create your own scenario. But that dupatta is lying there on the curbstones. And then finally, it's, it's there in the middle of the street. Now, middle of the street, usually actors will say, oh, a woman has gone missing. 
or she's dead, and they'll st already start building a scenario that's taken from the newspapers, and then you've got to push and push. For me, I learn a lot from students. I learn so much from watching the way they would play with that. So I need to, I haven't got there yet, but you know what I mean. It's, it's a whole unearthing. And of course, using your art form of theater to see uh, what material you will get and how you'll use it and how you'll play with it. not, please join me in thanking Maya for her phenomenal Thank you. presentation.